the app. Come over to the source components, authentication register. One more thing that we need to add is a, a, an input for password, sorry, an input for name. We already have the email address and the password. So we have to add an input for name. So this one is going to be full, full name. So let's just break this down. So coming at the top here, we are going to create a function called on, on register. So if you go recall, we've already set up our redox. Come over to your actions. So let me just kind of locate this quickly. In the store, go over to actions, auth actions. I'm going to create a, so at the top here, so let me just comment this to be login action. So I'm just going to define a register action, which is going to export a cons of register. We recall back. So for the registration is going to accept the name, email, and the password. So let's just go ahead and uh, specify the types. Then inside here, we are going to be making an Axios request that is going to uh, actually, that's going to make a request to our API. So that will lead me to importing Axios at the top so we can import Axios from Axios. So we've not yet installed that, but don't worry, we are going to quickly do that shortly. So I'm just going to terminate the app again. Sorry for these guys, but let's just flow along. I'm just going to break this into two. And we can add add types slash Axios. So that is done. So right now we have to make a request, but before we get there, we should still come back to our register. And if you can recall, as usual, we have to bring down the dispatch. And here we can just dispatch the register. So let me make sure that it's coming from the right part. So we have the register that's coming from the auth actions. And we have to now put down the objects, the name, email, and the password. So you can see because of the TypeScript feature it's recommending it for us. So at the top here, we have to define those variables. Or we can just use states. Oh, sorry guys for this, I'm so sorry. We can just define it. Let's just define it manually so that we don't make a mistake again. So we can just specify the string. So let me grab that you state from React. Then the first one is the name set name. The second one is the email and the last one is the password. So set email and set password. So you can see those errors disappears. Whenever we type, we want all those things to store in our state. So we can say on chain test, just like the way we did for the login, which is going to return the name. Then we can set the name to be that name and change text as well, email set email to email and change text to password. So this, this is more like a main stack. So if, if you can see, let's say that we are working on React Web, you can see that we are actually building a full stack main stack application, which is actually cool as well. So that's how we can, uh, I'm sorry guys, we have to set password there. So my Veeam is still loading. Set password, which is going to accept that password. 
and that's it that's okay and lastly whenever we hit on register so whenever we hit on press we have to just call that function called on register and let's go ahead and give this a try let's kind of console.log so guys sorry my machine is kind of lagging name so let me just put samuel anthony put my email so he's going to recommend email and password for me so let me hit enter and check our console so we should get samuel anthony so right here you can see samuel anthony to actually show us that it's perfectly working now the next thing we have to do is to complete uh create our add the ability for us to make a request with this register method and because we are going to be making returning a promise from our or making an assign request i mean we have to specify an assign here with a dispatch of all dispatch props all dispatch prop you can even get from the state but i don't think we actually need it so let's just stick with this for now then over here we have to whenever we are making a registration request we have to dispatch red loading reg loading type so this reg loading if you can recall in the, in the first place i talked about how we can do this with redux so we can just say payload is null then we can now stringify those values so we can just say this is equal to json slash stringify we have the name email and the password then we can just make an axios request so with the axios we are going to be making so let me properly make this uh, look nice we have to make a post request to this url so the url is api url i've already shown you how you can get this slash api slash users then we can pass the data and we can set the headers to have a so this is headers to so have a content type of application slash json uh, header then when we uh, successfully make a request we have to grab those value so we can say then it's going to return a response so that response means that everything worked perfectly but for the error means that everything didn't work perfectly so that will lead us to creating our error uh, reducer and also error types so for uh, time sake, I'm not going to create it. I'm just going to copy and paste that, then tell you a little things about it and explain it better. So whenever we are done registering a user, we have to dispatch a type of clear errors in case we have any error with a payload of null. We have to also dispatch a type of register success. Then we can pass the payload from the rest of data. So that's how we can actually do that. Then for the error itself, we have to dispatch a type of register fail with a payload of null. Then for the dispatch, we can dispatch a method called return error. So let's go ahead and uh, fix that error actions and also error reducer. But before we do that, let's go ahead and just add a method. So I've already fixed it, but I'm going to talk about it. So we have to return errors. So the return errors is going to accept an error message, which is going to come from the error.response.data. Then we can specify the status in case you wish. You can actually use a number or anything. Then we have to give it an ID. So the ID I'm going to give it here is called register fail. So we are going to use that to actually catch errors which we are going to display for the user at this top uh, part so let's go ahead and save that and go over to that error actions 
So the error of actions here is very simple. It's just a method that uh, dispatches these three things and specify a, an ID. So this ID, we can be able to grab it using our use selector from our component. Then whenever we detect an ID and also check whether the message is not empty, we are going to dis uh, display the error. So for the clear errors, typically what it does is going to dispatch a clear error. So let's go over to the uh, reducer so that you can see how we clear that error. I'm going to go over to the error reducer. So I just pasted that. We have an initial state of message status and ID, which is easy to understand with the following conventional way that we usually use to set up a, a reducer. Then get errors, get those errors and maps it to our state. Clear errors, like I, I, I said, clear errors clears everything in our state and resets, to, resets it to default. So that's exactly what we did there. So there is nothing much. You don't need to stress yourself on that. So just get it. I think I will put it also in the description so that you can have access to it. So guys, don't forget to hit the like button and also the subscribe button. Coming back to our users file, we can just console.log request.body to actually see whether this is actually working perfectly. And let's go ahead and register a user. So let me just kind of increase this a little bit. It seems to be down. So let me add 65 and save so that uh, we are going to have a little bit of space over here. Let me refresh. So guys, I had to restart the application because some things we are not actually working perfectly. So let's get back. So right here, I wanted to consider log this and also increase this size, which I have actually done and is, is in effect right away. Let's go ahead and give this a try. Samuel Anthony, I'm going to give her an email, sam at gmail.com and then password, I can just use one, three, four, five. And let's go ahead and register and check in our console. So uh, if everything worked perfectly, we should be able to see that and let me bring this down. Okay, you can see we have those uh, details that we sent over with our server, with our request, I mean, to our server. So that's how we can actually make an Axios request. And we can come over to this. So the first thing we need to do is to dis use the structuring to grab those values. Request of body. So we have the name, email, and the password. So we just have to do a small validation here. So I'm just going to uh, name this small validation. So we can see if there is no, if it's not a name or there's nothing like uh, email or there's nothing like password. So you just have to return rest of status. 400 the JSON message or the response message reads, please enter all fields. So that's how we can do that little validation. Let's go down a little bit. Then we have to check whether that user actually do a ZIT exist in our server. So this is going to now lead us to creating what is called schema. So schema is used, is used to manage MongoDB. It's more like when you work with MySQL and set up a database, you have to set up some table and also some columns. But it's more like also when you work with Laravel, you can use the PHP artisan command to actually set up your migrations. So this is exactly to schema. And that will lead us to creating a folder here called schema. So let me go ahead and create that folder. I'm going to create a folder called schema. Now inside that schema, we're going to create our models called, the first one is going to be the user's model. Uh, let me just give it a user. And the second one is going to be the product uh, more, a schema as well. So let me just leave it to product. But well, let's focus on the user for now. We have to bring in mongoose, which is going to require mongoose. I think I am, I'm making a mistake over here. We have the mongoose. We also have to bring in the schema from mongoose schema. 
now let's just go ahead and export this expose defaults we can just give it any name you can just maybe say user schema but let's stick to user for simplicity's sake then we can just uh, use the mongoose model then the model is your database models so if you're familiar with uh, laravel this is exactly how you do it so we can use the user schema now we're going to create a cons called user schema now the user schema is going to accept the schema now this schema is is like the controls of the kind of data that enters into a mongodb database and also controls uh, the test whether a a column is actually empty so we have the name so the name is going to be a type of string and also it's going to uh, require everything to true so we have the name email and the password i'm just going to copy this down the second one is the email a type of string true and it's going to be unique for every user and the last one is the password so the password is going to be a string and require true so there is something i forgot we can also add the uh, registration dates for the user which is going to be a type of string then the default, we can set the default value to, we can actually use the new date or we can also use date.now. So it all depends on your choice of, uh, you can even define uh, moment, you can use moment to actually set, uh, set date type that you need. So I think this is better. Now let me close this, close this. Coming back to this user, so the next thing we have to do now is to make sure that everything, let me kind of check something guys, so that I don't speak of points. Okay, we have already done our validation. Okay, now we have to check whether this user does exist. So if, if the user does exist, then we have to tell the, we have to send a message back to the user that there is actually an error. So, but for now we don't have a user that do exist. But the way I will do this because I want us to catch error before we complete this registration. So the way I'm going to do it right now is I'm going to check if this user exists in the database. You can say user.find. I think okay, automatically it's import that user.find one now we have to find that user by the email and it's going to give us a call back with that user now let me just do this if that user does not exist let's just return an error because i want to catch an error in our application so we have to return errors dot status of 400 dot json with a message of user is it so let's save that and let's come over to our register what i have to do right now is to bring in something called auth so this auth is going to make use of the use selector from react redux and it's going to get our states so i'm just going to set this to any because i don't want error so we can use the state.auth. So this state over here, we are making use of this auth here is coming from our reducer. So if you can recall, we have the auth reducer, the error reducer, and also the product reducer. So what I have to do right away is to check whether we do have an error. If we do have an error, we have to notify the user that there is actually an error. So I'm just going to bring in also the error reducer. let me just grab this and, and put it down so we have the arrow and here we have the state dot arrow so 
So we need we need this uh, sign up. We are just going to have we have to check whether there is an error ID. So if you can recall, we are using the register field. Now, if there is an error, or else we just have to return null. If there is an error, we have to return a test component. Now, this test component, I think, uh, if we make it this way, it's going to, okay, let's make sure that the message do exist. So I'm just going to do one more thing here. You can just say, there's an error dot message dot message or else you return null as well. Then right here we have to return the test component. Now this test is going to have a variant of small title with a color of, I think I have danger. Okay, I've not specified the danger color, but don't worry, we are going to do that quickly. Then we can give it a test transform to uppercase. We can give it a font size of 12 to make it a little bit smaller. Then we can give it a margin bottom of medium. Then inside here, we can pass that message. So we can just say error.message.message. And let me go ahead and uh, specify our color uh, for the danger. So coming back into our theme, I'm just going to put danger, which is going to be FF45100. So I think this looks better because it's kind of reddish. Then let's go ahead and save for this component. And let's kind of make a request. So guys, in case you save this, you're going to encounter an error. That's because we are not actually making use of the full error here. We use ERR. So if we go back to our reducer, you can see we are making use of ERR over here. So we are not making use of error directly. Then I can just uncomment this because I commented it to check what the problem was. And let's go over to register. I'm going to put my full name somewhere, put my email sam at gmail.com and I'm going to put my password and then I will hit register. So you can see automatically we returned an error which is telling us that user do exist. So that's how we can catch errors with Redux. So coming back to our user, since this user does not exist, so let me just go ahead and remove this does not. So since this user does not exist, we have to now create a new user. Now the new user is going to be making use of our schema. Then we can put the email, the password, and the name. Then we have to create a password hash. So because this password is actually a test, so we can store a direct text into our database. So let me just put, create a hashed password. Now that will lead us to bring, bring it in bcrypt js uh, from, I think, let me bring this down require the crypt.js. So bcrypt.js, the way it works is, we make use of that bcrypt.js, we are going to generate a sort. Now, you can give it a number, so I usually like using 10, but you can give it how many rounds, if you really understand more deeply how this sort works. Then it's going to return a sort. Now that sort, we can, use that source to hash our password. So we used bcrypt.js.hash. We hash uh, from the new user.password sort. Then it's going to return that hash for us with this callback. Then inside there, we can check if there is an error. We can say uh, return, sorry guys. 
return raise dot status dot four hundred dot json message of error hashing a password. But if there is no error, we just have to assign that new user dot password to the new hash. Then we can run new user dot save. So when we save this, it's going to give us a callback with that user that is saved. Then we can now uh, return generate a token because the token is actually what we are going to be using to uh, be able to log into our application, load the user, and also uh, make a particular request for each single user. So I'm just going to bring in the JWT at the top. So over here, I'm going to bring in the JWT. This is going to require JSON web token. And inside here, all we just have to do is to use the JWT.sign. It accepts an ID. So you can actually use it, any key you want. You can use name or anything, but just make sure you assign the key value. Then I'm going to pass the user dot ID or let's kind of consider log this user. So whenever the user registers before we proceed, so I'm just going to bring my console out and let's hit register. So we are actually having an issue here because this is supposed to be has. And let's hit register once more. So we have user underscore ID. So you can see the user is automatically registered. I'm going to show you that using the MongoDB compass. So what you have to do now is uh, once more, we have to sign an ID to user.id. Then after signing that, we have to put a comma here bring our config so i didn't bring that config is equal to require config so it's like assigning a password so let's get our password from amazon secrets so that's how we can do it then we set when we want this to expire so i want it to expire in one hour that is 3600 then it's going to return a token for us which we are going to now use so we can see if we can say if there's an error you just throw the error but if there is no error you just have to uh, return res the status of 200.json with a message then we can send back the user the token and any other thing that we want to send back so the first thing we have to send back is the token then we can construct our user because you don't want to send back the password so there's actually a way you can do it and minus the password but let's just go straight because i want to keep this uh, in a more simpler way then we have the id which is the user dot id we have the name which is the user dot name and we have the email, which is the user dot email. So I think that's of seats. It's kind of console log our user. And let me go ahead and open my compass because I, I really want to show you something. That user that we actually uh, registered now is already stored in our database. So I would suggest that you also download your compass, connect it and uh, make use of it. It's easier for you to manage your MongoDB credentials from your PC rather than always going online to manage your database. So I'm just going to click on this and connect. So I already have everything set. It's going to connect automatically. And you can see that database. You can see we have already, we already have a single user, but let me just get rid of this for now. And let's go ahead and let's kind of hit register once more and check in our console. We have 
the ID, the email, the password, everything. So this is actually what is returned to our application. So that's how we can actually register. And let's go ahead and uh, catch whenever this thing uh, is done. We want to redirect the user to the login screen whenever the user is done registering. So like this, we are done registering. When we hit on this again, we should get that error. You can see that the user already exists, except I change this email address. So once I change this email address, you see that error goes away because in the actions, we cleared the errors in case there was any error, then we return register success. But when I hit register again, we get that same error. So right now, the only active uh, reducer that we actually make use of is this clear errors, which is actually coming from the error reducer. And right now, let's go ahead and handle uh, dispatch type for register success, register fail, and also for authentication. That is for login. So that will bring us to opening our auth reducer. So go ahead and open that. Let me close the ones that we are not using for now. Now, inside here, we're going to have rich loading. And let's set that to false. So this reg loading is actually going to be used to uh, notify the user that the registration is on progress. And we are going to make use of it after we just uh, finish setting up everything. So let's just go ahead and finish setting everything up before we can make use of it. Then we have log loading. So this log loading is going to also be set to false. That's for log. When you try to log in, it's going to trigger that. Then we have is authenticated. So this authenticated is false by uh, null by default because it's going to actually notify us that the user is registered or the user is not registered or the user is not logged in as well. Then we have the user to be null by default. So the first case we have to handle is reg loading. So let me just bring down all the cases that we are going to be using. Or let me just go ahead this way. Then we have to bring in this from the states. I think we have to spread the states. Then we can set the reg loading to true. Whenever we dispatch that the registration is on progress, we also have to uh, dispatch for the log loading, which is going to return from all the states. We just have to take log loading and set that to true as well. We also have to dispatch for the uh, case of user loading. So for the case of user, user, sorry, user loading, we have to spread the state and can uh, set its loading. I don't think I'm going to make use of this. So I don't actually need this user loading. So don't worry about that, you can get rid of it. We have the register success and uh, the logout success. So let's go ahead and do for the register success. Which is going to return an object. So for the object, it's going to be coming from the states and it's going to return reg loading to false because we are no more on the process of registering and it's going to set our authenticated to true and it's going to as well, so let me put comma here and format that and it's going to as well set, uh, okay, we don't have its loading because I wanted to set its loading to false. So we also have the case of logout success, the case of auth error I also have uh, the the case of register fail we also have the case of uh, login fail so login fail so whenever any of these whenever we dispatch any of these all we just have to do is from the states we have to set everything back to the default value. So we have to set the reg loading to false. We also have to set the user to null. We also have to set the is authenticated back to null. And also the log loading back to false. Then we also have the case of login success and also the user loaded. So let me just put that down, login success. 
So for the login success, we have to return from the state. So it's pretty much like register success. Let me just go ahead and grab that, except that we are going to be returning the user that just logged in because we are going to be using a new token. So the user that just logged in is going to be returning that current user and also the new token. And it's going to be coming from the payload and we are just going to spread that payload. So that's exactly what you have to do for this one. And we set this, uh, we set, sorry, we set it's so authenticated to true. And also we set is login. I think it's log loading to false. And lastly, we have to set for the user loaded. So for the user loaded, whenever our application opens, it's going to make a request with that token. So if that token happens to be correct, it's going to also return the user. So, and also return uh, just pretty much like what we did here. So let me just grab that and paste. It's going to return from the state. We just don't need the payload because it's not going to be making use of the uh, payload, but it's going to return Okay, it's going to make use of the payload, but the payload is going to be the actual user that the token got verified for. So let me just set that user to that payload. So as we proceed, you're going to have more understanding of what we are actually doing here. So we are done with the auth reducer and everything, I gradually explained everything. So hope you will understand everything that we talked about. So right now, let's go ahead and handle for the login. So the video is already getting too long. So I really don't want it to get too long for that. So we're already done with the registration. So in the next part, we are going to handle the login route and also, but before we handle the login route, we are going to make sure that whenever the user registers successfully, automatically is going to redirect us to the login screen. Then from the login screen, or we can log in. Yes, we can log in and go over to our product list where we can actually see our products. And then we can handle the logout and also the login actions everything in the next part so thank you guys for watching and do make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button and in case you wish to buy me a coffee the link is on the description just go ahead and do that or you can also support me on paypal so thank you and see you on the next part so see you on the next part bye bye